Harry's Wife, Part 101.85 Their Mission of Self-Destruction As you know, Valentine Lowe's book is attracting a lot of comment, observation and reportage. The Sussex Survivors Squad, the self-penned name of those that were involved in the employ of the Sussexes, formed their own informal survivors group to demonstrate the fact that they managed to survive being involved with the gruesome twosome. We now turn to Dan Wooten with an opinion piece for the Mail Online. Perhaps the greatest irony in the campaign by the Sussexes to present themselves as having been silenced by the monarchy is that the very people who have the receipts to prove what really happened are themselves silenced by law. The Sussex Survivor Squad, as they now refer to themselves, are the band of once loyal staff members who made a Herculean left bid to keep Harry's wife happy as a new member of the British royal family, only to see their efforts burnt down time and again by the American actress and her deeply unhappy husband, Prince Harry. It's easy to understand why many of the previously devoted courtiers are now convinced the couple were on a self-destruct mission from day one, looking for any slight, aggrievement or apparent discrimination to weaponize against the institution that was working so hard to appease them. They weren't actually looking out for it, but with the lens of Harry's wife's narcissism, anything that threatened a sense of control was then viewed as a slight, an aggrievement, or apparent discrimination, and was utilised as such for the purposes of the nullification of that threat to control. These staff members, many of whom had personally devastating exits from the employ of the Sussexes, have been unable to speak publicly, even to correct the record, constrained by draconian confidentiality provisions of working for the royal family, including the Official Secrets Act. But over the past three days, their stories have taken centre stage in the latest round of the royal family fighting back against the Sussexes, thanks to a bombshell bug by the highly respected royal correspondent for the Times, Valentine Lowe, who has diligently diligently covered the monarchy for a quarter of a century. While I have long been aware of the acrimony behind the scenes, to read the words of the staff members who were once prepared to dedicate much of their lives to serving the Sussexes, is still shocking. The most damning conclusion is that Harry's wife is a narcissistic sociopath who played her former advisers. But that is just the beginning of the devastating claims. During the walkabout, Harry's wife is reported to have said, I can't believe I'm not getting paid for this. It was like working for a couple of teenagers, according to the reported words by Lowe of Samantha Cohen, their highly regarded private secretary, who had been recommended by the Queen after years of loyal service. And Harry's wife's behaviour had apparently been difficult and demanding from the start, including when she is said to have threatened to dump Harry, unless he released his first statement eviscerating the media and confirming their relationship. See parts pass him. A source told Lowe, she was saying, if you don't put out a statement confirming I'm your girlfriend, I'm going to break up with you. In fact, he reports, keeping Harry's wife happy, and by extension keeping Harry happy, was an ongoing challenge. Six months before their engagement was announced, Lowe claims that Harry's wife ominously told one of Harry's courtiers, I think we both know I'm going to be one of your bosses soon, intimidation. Once the preparation for the wedding got underway, Harry's wife's behaviour appeared to worsen. I was the first journalist to break the story of Tiara Gate, where Harry was warned by the Queen about the way Harry's wife was speaking to close advisers, and the fact Kate had fallen out with her sister-in-law over the treatment of staff by Harry's wife at Kensington Palace. Lowe's book recounts one occasion where Harry's wife had been especially horrid to a young female staff member at a meeting, telling her, don't worry, if there was literally anyone else I could do ask to do this, I'd be asking them instead of you. Belittlement. Harry's wife regularly rang staff members throughout the night, with one telling Lowe about a dinner on a Friday night. Every ten minutes I had to go outside to be screamed at by her and Harry. It was, I can't believe you've done this, you've let me down. What were you thinking? It went on for a couple of hours. You could not escape them. There were no lines or boundaries. It was last thing at night, first thing in the morning. 
One staff member branded Harry and Harry's wife outrageous bullies to another colleague when they were considering quitting who replied, that's so dreadful and they are bullies. During their time in the royal family, a host of staff members left the employ of Harry and Harry's wife. They included private secretaries, Samantha Cohen and Amy Pickerill, two PAs, including Melissa Tuapati and two nannies. At least ten former staff members were reported to want to give evidence to the formal investigation into the palace's handling of complaints about Harry's wife's alleged bullying, the findings of which have been hushed up by Buckingham Palace. Once again, it's the courtiers who find themselves silenced. That's not the case for Harry's wife, who described the bullying allegations as a calculated smear campaign. Her solicitor, Jenny Afia, added, What bullying actually means is improperly using power repeatedly and deliberately to hurt someone physically or emotionally. The Duchess of Sussex absolutely denies ever doing that. Knowing her as I do, I can't believe she would ever do that. It just doesn't match my experience of her at all. Well, that's because, Miss Solicitor, you were treated to the facade. I feel this book is corroboration of years of reporting by myself and other top royal correspondents, which has seen us completely unfairly branded both racists and bullies by the Sussex Squad social media trolls simply for accurately reporting the reality of the behaviour by Harry and Harry's wife that culminated in me revealing their decision to Megxit in January 2020. Looking back, such a decision was now inevitable. Those book reveals Harry was terrified of becoming an also ran once his nephew Prince George turned 18 and stole his thunder. Harry's wife, meanwhile, according to a palace insider, thought she was going to be the Beyonce of the UK. Such a toxic combination was a recipe for disaster. The staff were treated so badly because they were the messengers who had to try and keep their aggrieved royals happy while working within the suffocating rules of the royal family. In the end, it proved to be an impossible task. But I'm of the belief that Harry's wife never actually wanted this to work. In the months before Megxit, I had revealed her Hollywood team was already negotiating commercial deals, including for her children's book. As one former staff member told Lowe, everyone knew that the institution would be judged by her happiness. The mistake they made was thinking that she wanted to be happy, she wanted to be rejected because she was obsessed with that narrative from day one. As we've seen so many times before, just because it's Harry and Harry's wife's narrative, it doesn't mean it's true. The real silence parties in this tawdry tale of the Sussexes versus the royal family have now been heard by the world. And it sounds a lot more candid than what the couple told Oprah Winfrey. Strong words indeed from Dan Wooten, of course, blowing his own trumpet alongside all of that, but making the point that these individuals who were silenced have now been able to speak out through Valentine Lowe's book, and because so many of them have done so, it lends weight, credibility and credence to the allegations that have been made against Harry's wife. But what does it say below the line? Lucy Lucy, to set the record straight and give a fair balance, Oprah should interview the ex-Sussex staff on TV. I won't hold my breath. Kate Vale, if someone was constantly ringing me out of work hours, I'd turn off my phone. If they bullied me, I'd definitely turn around and tell them what I thought of them. Both barrels. Does no one stand up for themselves anymore? No matter who it is, you have to have basic manners, otherwise you're just not worth, worth working for. Aurora. And what else is there we don't know about the gruesome twosome? Posse responds, oh, I'm sure there's plenty more. Peter, Harry's wife as a minor American actress suddenly acted like a Hollywood diva. Maybe she thinks she is like Jackie Onassis. You can tell she, a <clears throat> 41-year-old divorcee, is an immature, petulant control freak. By the way, she has banned Prince Harry from meeting his father-in-law, likewise refusing to allow her own father to meet his grandchildren. Tepi, titles and line if succession need to go. Plus, they should never, ever attend an official function again. They're all about drama. May King Charles's reign be markled free. Derek SP, 1989. Knowing all of this, both of them have given up the right to the victim status they hold so dearly. Zero empathy, kindness or grace was shown by either of them. To think she had the nerve to stand in front of a camera and say, No one has asked if I'm okay. How do they look themselves in the mirror? 
Ocean of Love. It's about time someone will tell the real truth about Harry's wife. Says Marias responds, it's happening because the Queen is no longer in charge and able to request silence about her from the family and staff. Russia Mum, I'm glad the staff are speaking out. Wax lyrical, the sad thing is, I think the whole world was making excuses for her, feeling sorry, only her mother could attend the wedding. We all really wished her well. We should have listened to her siblings and saved everyone a lot of heartache. Dizzle Pop, this is great news. She thinks she can treat people how she likes. This will hopefully teach her a valuable lesson. And hundreds of comments in a similar vein, which is no surprise. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.